All right then guys, welcome to the video, welcome back to the channel, and today I thought I'd do a video on the day-to-day -day running costs of a Civic Type R EP3. So I guess if this is a car you're looking at getting or something like that, this is sort of the costs associated with just the general ownership, not really modifying it. Although we may get into some of the differences between a modified versus a standard one in this video as well. So there's nothing left to it really, let's just get into the list and let's start running through the general costs it's gonna cost you to run one of these Civic Type R EP3s. It's pretty much well known that you get on average about 250 miles to a full tank of fuel, which is obviously not crazy in terms of distance for an entire tank. The tank itself is 50 litres, but I mean, 250 miles is based on sort of mixed driving. If you're doing just strictly motorway, you can get it over 300, and that is for the standard car. So the standard car is about 33 miles per gallon. In my case, actually, I haven't done a proper test in miles per gallon for this current setup with the dropping cams and everything, but I did do a quick calculation on when I was just doing a motorway run, I was getting 37 miles per the gallon. So even with my map before this, it was around 31 miles per gallon. So you don't really lose out by actually modifying this car in, in terms of the fuel economy. So with that being said, let's say, for example, you're only putting Tesco Momentum 99 in this. That's what I do with this car. It's the only fuel I can run now. At time of recording, it's about £1.46-ish a litre. So it works out about basically 73-ish pounds to fill one of these things up all the way. So it's not a cheap car to run if you're having to do a lot of miles, but this isn't really a car that you buy for long distances. This is a miles per gallon car rather than a miles per gallon car. I do still think actually that the miles per gallon, considering how much fun you can have with this car, is actually pretty decent for a performance car. So next up is tyres, and these are something you don't really want to skimp on because one, this is a fun car to chuck around corners, and two, these are the things that connect the car to the road. So you want to be able to trust that the rubber you've got is good. So in that regard, I would recommend at least bottom of the line should be a mid-tier range tyre, if not going for something more higher end like these Michelin Pilot Sport 5s. It makes such a big difference to the way you drive the car because you have way more confidence in the tyres. With that being said, the standard car comes with 205s on the standard wheels. You can push that to a 250. 15 on standard wheels that's what i did when i had the standard wheels but again you can go for a wider wheel run a wider tire so in theory i could run a 225 on this and that would actually save me a pretty decent amount of money per tire because that's a far more popular size i think on like mercedes and audis i think i can't because of my current suspension setup with the geometry and everything it would rub in the rear the fronts would be fine and this is an 8j wheel i probably wouldn't recommend it for the standard wheel because i don't think it's quite wide enough for a 225 i'm sure people do it so it's up to you i'm before these Michelins, I was running the Uni Royal Rain Sport 3s, and now the Rain Sport 5s are out. Those are around £300 for a full set, so that's not too bad considering you get a good tyre out of that. I had two sets of them, so I really like them. So that is sort of the mid range tyre that I would recommend going for, or something around that kind of performance. If you want to go for something like the Michelin Pilot Sports, these are around £430 pounds. There could even potentially be a cashback option offer on when you go to buy them, so they could actually end up being even cheaper than that. And those prices are for a 215 so remember if you go to you might be able to get them cheaper. Fully recommend at least going for a mid-range tyre. Spending a bit of money on tyres is well worth it. So next up we've got oil and I believe Honda's OEM choice is a 5W30 for these but from everyone that I've spoken to performance shops and everything everyone is basically running 5W40 on these just slightly thicker better for the higher revving engine and obviously these things have now got quite a few miles on them so just a bit safer for the engine so realistically you're looking about 45 pounds for a decent brand of oil for about five liters of it and I always carry around a liter in the boot just in case because these things do like to munch through a bit of oil with that high revving engine and it's definitely something you you need to pay attention with these engines so many people just think these are bulletproof and can run them for ages and to be fair you can run them with a scarily low amount of oil but it is definitely not recommended and obviously the more you're in the higher rpms the more you need to be checking the oil level just to check that everything is okay because that is what kills these engines it's just the lack of oil or lack of oil changes so definitely something to keep on top of because obviously you don't want your engine going pop but yeah 5w40 is what pretty much everyone recommends for these things so you can pick that up anywhere <laughs> Obviously here you can see I've got a brake upgrade, but for most EP3s, it's gonna be the standard brakes. There are actually a couple of options I've done here. So you can either go for just basically like replacing like to some sort of OEM spec with just normal non-performance parts. So you can run a set of Paget discs, which to be fair, actually they, I believe they run the Paget discs on the rear in the Civic Cup, or at least they used to. If they're good enough for racing, they must be good enough for the road anyway. So those Paget discs come in at about 72 pounds for the front, 39-ish pounds 
£40 for the rear, depends on when you're looking. And you can pair those with some Brembo pads for £47 for the front, £32 for the rear, and you've got yourself an OEM replacement brake setup. What you could do if you are at that point though, is you could do some sort of upgrade. PBS actually sell a kit where you get front discs, front pads and rear pads as one whole bundle and you can pick that for about 410 pounds which is pretty good actually because then you get a full brake solution the discs if you want just the disc those are groove discs like i have on the front here those come in at 180 pounds obviously an upgrade in the materials used especially in the brake pads to get more of an aggressive bite when you're braking and obviously brake fade won't be as bad with a pad like that as well but obviously if only your front pads need replacing you don't need to do the rears because the rears don't do too much work you could also if you didn't want to run the pbs pads you could run some Frodo DS 2500s, those are about £149. The only downside to these pads is you're going to get a lot more brake dust, which obviously then sticks to the wheels. Pretty much the only trade off, maybe a bit of squealing as well, but you will get much better braking performance. So, it's whether you think that's a worthy trade off, I would say it is worth upgrading your brakes in some way. So, that is just one option that you can do that on an OEM caliper setup. <music> Actually, I'm going to give you a few options here because it sort of depends on your route and what you prefer to do. I actually take this car at the moment straight to a Honda dealership. They offer two packages. They offer the Honda 12 and the Honda 12 Plus. If you're running an induction kit like I am here, then the 12 Plus basically doesn't really become worth it because they do like a filter change for that. And there's a couple of other things. So I usually go for a Honda 12 service. What that is, is just your basic service really they don't actually do spark plugs with that but they do oil change everything and they give the whole car a full check over the reason i like going to honda is because honda are looking over it with their eye and letting me know basically with a checklist of things like that are good or bad to do with the car and that means then i can then go and sort them out myself rather than paying dealership prices to sort those problems it's just a nice way for me year on year to know what's wrong with it the last time i had one of those done it was 250 pounds those prices may change when you're looking at this and also included in that you get aa breakdown cover as well well. So that is option number one. Option number two is you could do the service yourself. And so if you were to buy five liters of oil, oil filter, uh, pollen filter, and spark plugs, and upgrade the spark plugs as well to some good ones, you're looking at about 129 pounds, which isn't crazy. And that is for your basic service option. I'll leave a link to everything itemized down below as well, in case you just want to pick one of those things up. And that is obviously if you're happy to service it yourself and aren't worried about anyone actually having a look over the car at the same time. And the third option is going with more of a specialized Honda performance shop. For example, Honda HQ based in the Midlands is where I had my timing chain done and had valve clearance and stuff done. So they actually offer two different options. I'm going to read out what they offer for both of them because it's a long list. They offer a minor service and a major service. So with the minor service, you get Shell Helix, Ultra, engine oil, obviously an oil filter, a pollen filter, and a full check over of the car. And that comes in at 115 pounds. And then their major service, which is a little bit more expensive but a lot more does get done is shell helix ultra engine oil and filter pollen filter air filter spark plugs upgrading to ngk iridiums transmission oil which is oem honda mtf3 fluid valve clearance is adjusted which is worth doing brake fluid flush and replacement clutch fluid flush and replacement and a full check over and that comes in at 390 pounds but obviously as you can see a lot more work gets done there touching on the valve clearances it is definitely something worth doing because i noticed the difference when i had that done at honda hq the engine almost felt a bit more peppy and more responsive because of it so definitely worth doing if it hasn't been done within around about 40 ish thousand miles and like i've already said i will leave links to all of these different options down below and all the information if you're looking to book with Honda HQ for example but, but that is basically the three best options for servicing one of these cars and if you end up not going with Honda and getting your service booked through them and getting the AA breakdown cover obviously you're going to want breakdown cover for the car now these cars are getting quite old so there might actually be a few places that won't actually give you a quote but i found that basically it's around 30 pounds for the year if you're just staying in this country and then 35 pounds if you plan to do one european trip i can actually find a quote on a price comparison site where it would allow me to do multiple trips to europe so if that's something you're thinking of doing it might be worth having more of a look around and definitely something to bear in mind that they might start not offering breakdown cover for these things moving forward 
And when it comes to an MOT for these things, actually I found out it is actually illegal for anyone to charge more than £54.85 for an MOT. So these are the same price as every other car to get an MOT. The one thing to look out for with these things though, and that will probably fail an MOT most likely with these things is obviously your bushes being worn and all that kind of stuff. But rust is a major problem with these things. And I do have a full video on things to look for with these things when buying one. So go check that out if you're actually thinking of picking one of these up. So something to consider, which doesn't really count, I suppose, as a running cost, as a yearly cost, is the parts for these things. This is actually one of the main reasons why I went for this car, because parts in general are easier to buy and find secondhand, but also are usually cheaper. So as an example, I bought a brand new pair of headlights for this car, genuine Honda parts, for £407 for both headlights. Now, if you were to do the same thing with a Golf GTI of the same generation, you're looking at £413 for one headlight. Those add up across an entire car's worth of parts if you're having to buy stuff for them. <laughs> And what is becoming another expensive part of owning one of these cars is the road tax. These have been going up on average about 10 to 20 pounds per year of each year that I've owned one of these anyway. So I can only imagine that's gonna continue. So at time of recording, these are now 395 pounds a year to tax on the road, which is a lot of money to be spending every year for the terrible condition that our roads are in. But definitely something you need to bear in mind with these things, they are gonna keep going up as well. I can't see them ever freezing the price, but it is worth it because the car is so much fun to drive. And so another big one is the insurance for one of these things. Now, but obviously this is a subject where there is so many variables at play depending on your age, amount of years of no claims bonus, points on your license, where you live. So it's quite hard for me to just tell you a this is how much it is kind of number. But to give you some sort of context, before I had my joint policy with this and the S2000, I was paying about 500-ish pounds per year to be insured with this and some name drivers. And that was with the standard power. Once I upped the power and told them about the map, that jumped about 80 pounds to just under 600 pounds for the year, which I think is not too bad considering my age, but that is a modified car insurance policy. So definitely something I'd recommend looking into because you can save quite a decent amount of money if you're going with a specialized insurer. I'm currently with Adrian Flux, but there are other options out there. So definitely have a look around for modified car insurance as that can bring your premium down. But it is definitely worth checking before you pick one of these up just in case the price ends up being more than you're expecting. So in theory, these are something you don't need to worry about with the depreciation, because in my opinion, these have already hit the bottom of the market and they're only going up now, especially if you can find one in good condition with minimal rust. And another little bonus here is that these cars seem to be clear of ULEZ or like the clean air zones, basically. There are no charges for these cars in those zones. So obviously, if you're living in one of those areas or frequent one of those areas, not having to pay every day to drive in those areas is obviously nice. So there we go, guys. Hopefully this video has been useful for you being able to make a decision on whether you think one of these things is actually worth picking up. I would say it's 100% worth it. I've loved owning this thing over the over six and a half years I've had this thing. Realistically, it is a great raw drive this car that you can't really buy anymore and is relatively cheap to maintain and keep on the road so of course i'm going to recommend picking one of these things up i absolutely love mine again i will leave all the links to everything i've spoken about in the description below let me know down below if there's something i've missed off i'm happy to answer any questions or anyone else in the comment section can answer any questions you may have if this is a car you're thinking of picking up and also go check out the channel for plenty of other videos based around the ownership and modifying and please do consider subscribing because that does help the channel out a lot. Give this video a like and I'll catch you guys in the next one.